I was 19 years old when I had met the guy that asked me to marry him. I said yes because I wanted to feel chosen. I should have said no. But I wanted that fairy tale wedding. I wanted that happily ever after. I wanted somebody to love me unconditionally. My wedding day was underwhelming to say the very least. So on the day of my wedding, I treated myself to go and get my hair done. And the hairstylist, as they often do, asked me, have you got any special plans for today? To which I said, my friend is getting married. I couldn't even admit that it was my special day. What that day commenced was the beginning of 10 years of domestic violence. Sometimes I would use my voice to speak up for my needs and what I wanted, or to voice my opinions, and it would be met with violence. There were many bruises, many tears, and many tantrums. So it was really late, and I was trying to get home from the city. And I kept on looking at the missed calls on my phone and listening to the voice messages. I don't know where you are right now, but when I see you, I'm gonna mess you up. And my heart was in my throat. So the taxi pulled into the driveway, and the first thing I noticed were the clothes all over the street and I was stepping over my jewellery and a digital camera. I got my keys out of my purse and I, my hand was shaking and I was trying to open the door and he just opened it. I couldn't even get the key in the lock and he said, where have you been? And the first thing I noticed was, oh my gosh, I could smell alcohol in his breath. He was so drunk. There were bottles of vodka everywhere and I could smell gasoline. And I didn't know where it was coming from and I looked out in the back garden and there was another big pile of all of my clothes that were heaped waiting to be set alight. And he was looking for the matches so he could light it up. And I could see that my shoes, the heels had been snapped off and my computer was in two parts because he had smashed it with a hammer and he had cut my desk in half with an ax. Precious photos that can't be replaced of my grandmother were ripped apart. Letters that she had written me before she died. And I called my dad and it was, by this stage, it was three o'clock in the morning and I called my dad and I said, dad, what do I do? And he said, Sarah, you call the police, you silly girl, you call the police. I remember when the police arrived, I was so strong. I was really strong. I had my brave face on. I was really good at that. And the police asked me what were the names and ages of my children. And it was up until that point that I was able to hold it together until he asked me that. And then I just broke down crying. I felt so powerless. And I knew that something had to change. I had to change. I had to make sure that my children didn't know this was okay. I left with nothing. I had two suitcases, two children, and over $30,000 worth of debt. And there were some days I didn't even know how I would feed my children at that time. And so we're in the supermarket after school and we're walking through all of the aisles and I'm seeing everything that I would love to eat because at the time I was starving myself so I could feed my kids. And I remember one day I called my mother and I was still in that moment, still unable to tell her, hey mom, I'm hungry, I need some help. And she told me to just take one day at a time. That was the best piece of advice that she gave me. And then from that, I was able to take one moment at a time to then change my life, to build the momentum that I needed to get to that next chapter. And it was just six years later that I had a full circle moment that I was in a supermarket parking lot, loading in the groceries, for the weekly shop into the back of my car. And I'm feeling grateful that I've got the money to pay for the groceries and feed my children. And a woman comes up to me and she has a two-year-old daughter. She looked about two years old in a stroller. And she walks towards me and she says, excuse me, miss, do you think you could help me? I'm really hungry and I don't have a way of feeding my daughter right now. And my heart, oh, my heart just went out to her straight away because I knew that that was me, but six years ago. And I opened up my purse and I had two $20 bills. 
and I handed them to her and I said, it's all gonna be okay. Just take one day at a time. Because when I was brave enough to take those steps, to leave the dysfunction, to set those boundaries, to ask for help, like that woman inspired me to do and to ask for, my life began to change. So much so that 10 years later, I had my fairy tale wedding. I married the love of my life. I had two more children. You'll look back one day and you'll be so proud of yourself that you were able to survive. And what I know to be true is that if you be the love that you believe you deserve, it will change your world. Is that if you treat yourself as you would treat a small child, it can create magic in your world. If she fell over, you would pick her up and comfort her. If she split her eyebrow open or you had tears running down her face or whatever it is, you would comfort her and tell her it's all going to be 